The race to control the U.S. Senate has taken a new turn. The Democrats have now edged closer to retaining control of the Senate. This comes after the incumbent Democrat, Mark Kelly, defeated Republican Blake Masters to win the Senate seat in Arizona. And now this has left the Democrats just one seat short of securing a majority. So this means that the fate of the Senate now hinges over Nevada. All eyes will be on this seat as Nevada election workers grind to tally hundreds of thousands of uncounted ballots. As in Nevada, it's a neck-and-neck -neck race between the incumbent Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto and the Republican State Attorney General Adam Laxalt. Now, if the Democrats somehow manage to win this crucial seat, then the Senate will be under their control. But if Republicans manage to win the seat, then the focus will shift towards the last remaining seat, that is Georgia. Although Georgia's outcome is weeks away, as Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock will face Republican Herschel Walker in a December 6th runoff. But in case of a tie, the fate of the Senate will be decided by the Vice President Kamala Harris, since she can cast the tie-breaking vote. Meanwhile, the former U.S. President Donald Trump, who served as the country's 45th president, is set to announce next week that he will take another shot at the presidency in 2024. This was confirmed by one of his top aides, Jason Miller. The statement comes at a time when the U.S. President Joe Biden is gunning for him as the Republicans and the Democrats are fighting hard for control of Congress. And now, in order to make our country successful and safe and glorious, I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. However, there could be some legal hurdles for the former president, who would be taking his third shot at the presidency. Trump is facing a flurry of court cases. He is facing a probe for election subversion, his retention of the White House records and his business affairs are under scrutiny. And for more on this, we are being joined by Dr. Christina Dragomir, who is a U.S. political commentator and author. Thank you for being with us. Now, the elections where democracy is on the ballot, according to the U.S. president. The fate of the Senate now hinges over Nevada. What are we expecting here? Good evening, Alisa, and thank you for having me. Um, indeed, such a surprise um, midterm elections in the United States, the Republicans who predicted the red ways, um, which has not materialized. However, as we have seen, Republicans have made some gains and there will be some changes, especially in the House of Representatives, but also with the Senate. But the changes are not as big or as red as the Republicans would have wanted. What I wanted to bring to the attention of your viewers today is that American politics, while right now is decided at the level of the state, uh, because these are state elections, is also very localized. So if we look at states like Nevada or like states or like New York, where I'm currently in, we see that the seats are actually being won by the people who are winning at the local level. So while we tend to speak within American politics about a red state or a blue state, a red state being Republican, a blue state being Democrat, actually, if you zoom into the states, you would see that those states have pockets. So I think it's really important to understand those particular pockets um, within the United States because the early urban pockets, the cities where a lot of the population is actually um, congregated tend to vote more Democrat and the rural areas tend to vote a little bit more Republican. So what we are seeing right now in the case of Nevada, it's something very interesting where we see a red Nevada for or at least a pink Nevada in most of the places. But we see places like the Clark Country and Las Vegas where um, there are a lot of um, 
immigrants and there are a lot of Latinos who are voting. And uh, those uh, areas tend to be blue. As a result of it, we are still waiting to see what are those particular counties going to bring in. But we already know that as the votes are being counted, the votes that still remain are from those blue pockets, from the Democratic pockets. So there is a lot of hope and there's a lot of optimism on, on the Democratic side. However, of course, um, chances are, since this is such a tight race, um, that the Republicans might still, might still win. Something else that I wanted to bring to your to your viewers is um, this idea of the Latino vote. The Latino vote, um, which has now and then been discussed within American politics, has become such an important part of this midterm elections. Uh, right now, we see the new waves of young uh, Latino voters who are um, changing uh, the um, the um, uh, scale of the American politics who are getting involved, uh, both within the Republican Party, like they are in Florida, but also like in Nevada or in Arizona or in California, voting more Democratic. Right. Doctor, has there, as you've mentioned, there hasn't been the uh, big red wave as predicted by Trump, and these elections mm. are much closer than expected. With the results that we've seen so far, are there any surprises? So um, the surprises are at the level of the um, of the processes. First of all, I think the, um, um, America has taken a deep breath, uh, considering the fact that there have not been very many challenges of the election process itself. This is one of the welcome surprises, I think, on all parts of the Democratic, on the Democratic uh, sides, because this is the last thing that one needs to for the um, election process itself to be critically engaged with. So it seems like the, the very small uh, hiccups that have been presented is not something to be worrisome. And people of America still have trust within the um, election process within the United States. So this is the first one. The second one is, and this is another surprise, I think, especially for former President Trump, is that the candidates that he supported did not win as strongly as he thought they would win. And I'm particularly referring right now at the state in Georgia, where he supported the candidate, um, the Republican candidate Walker, who, as you know, is going to go for another tour of the elections against the Democratic incumbent. So he did not win. Um, Kelly Lake in Arizona, who he also supported, did not win um, in, um, in Arizona. So we are seeing right now how the American politics is being redrawn um, along different lines, probably a little bit further from President Trump. But that's obviously um, a bell that it's ringing for the Republican Party about their presidential nominations. And if uh, the, um, uh, President Trump still has those chances to win, as it was pre predicted probably by them a few months ago. So this is, I think, one of the biggest, biggest surprises um, in um, in, in those races. But also, I think that the um, other surprises are the people on the Democratic candidates that have won, the Generation Z um, uh, representative from Florida, the very young, he's only 25, and he's joining the Senate and the Congress. Um, and there are other, other races um, that have put forward more uh, progressive candidates, um, but like in Oregon, for example, and those um, um, candidates have also won. So I think overall, these were the surprises, but the welcome surprise is the trust in the election system. Right, Doctor, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your analysis. Thank you, Alisa. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.